And to remember, what is impossible with man is possible with God. The only reason I'm asking is so I can bring you down to your soul. Okay. It's just not the way. Because I, you know, you don't want the stamps on it. Did you? No, just play it. My Lord Jesus said that whatever we do to the least of these, we're doing it unto to Jesus. So this is uh, this is the love of God, and we just praise our Heavenly Father for that great love of His dear Son dying for you. We are finishing the year 2012, entering into 2013, and I'm telling you, we are so excited to spend these few last hours of this year uh, here with the homeless, with the volunteers, with a church that is about souls, going out, not sitting in the pews. You know, we had a choice tonight. We could go um, have a party um, or celebrate this end of the year uh, in a different way, but we decided as a group, as a church, to share Jesus Christ with everyone. There is going to be thousands of people here. What an opportunity for the church to shine. What an opportunity to let them know that He's coming back, that He died on the cross, He rose from the grave, and He loves them. Um, I, I can't imagine being in a different place than right here with the people, with the homeless, sharing the hope that Jesus Christ brings, not only with words, but also tangibly with food, with tracks, with comic books, with videos, uh, letting everyone know that, you know, the 2013 can be an amazing, awesome year filled with victories, breakthroughs, and this peace that Jesus said, I will give. I'll give you peace, not like this world gives, but I will give you my peace that surpasses all understanding. What we do gives credibility to the words that we preach. Jesus not only said, I love you, but he actually went and he manifested his love with action. He said, I will die. His father confirmed it together and he went and he died. He was nailed to a tree and on the third day he rose from the grave. So you and me can live forever with our father, with Jesus in eternity. Are you, are you excited for New Year's? All right. Where was his death? Where was his great death? There you go, God bless you. Okay. He wasn't tough you guys want some chili too? He pleaded yeah. for help. I hope that you're There you go, sir. God bless. Happy New Year. Ma'am? Ma'am, do you want some? Do you want some chili? It's hard to see through this steam here. Here you go, God bless you. I'm here because God never quits and uh, I had a problem of kind of giving in and uh, getting discouraged and uh, falling down and quitting thinking that God gives up but he never gives up so I am the happiest man on earth right now to be here with the greatest family warriors for Jesus that love the lost and will do anything to see them come home to God our Heavenly Father in Jesus precious name we're the mighty men just like David's mighty men. And we're fearless and we'll do anything for Christ. We'll deny ourselves, take up on the cross and follow and go all the way with Him because that's the only way to go in these end times. Amen.
He says, loves you. Praise the Lord. Happy cinnamon buns. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's a happy New Year's in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's all about Jesus. Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. It's all about Jesus. Eternity in the kingdom of God with the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Praise us. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm telling people that a home in heaven is a gift so that they will come to, to receive it. And we are um, giving out some uh, gospel tracts and uh, so they can read in their, at their leisure. Yeah. Well, we're uh, celebrating New Year's and uh, feeding the homeless, feeding the poor, and feeding anyone else that's hungry and, and needs uh, the gospel. Why you didn't go to a regular church when there is a roof and nice seats? Look around, it's way too boring. This is a real church, this is what Jesus would have done. Praise Jesus! I spent the drug dealer! I give him money so that you have big houses. I spent, I robbed from my father, I robbed from my brother, I robbed my best friends, I didn't care. It came to a point where I would stop my best friend for fifty dollars. Street Church! <laughs> Happy New Year from Street Church! Awesome place to be, best place to be on New Year's Eve. New beginnings. Bring it on, Jesus. Bring it on. They came uh, along? No, my daughter's here. <laughs> hey, Princess! Can you Look wait? at this! <laughs> you like it? Nice, eh? You having a good time? You like the hot chocolate? <laughs> it's the best in town. <laughs> good girl. Just coming down here and try to reach to the lost, the homeless, like what Jesus commanded us to do. And, you know, we just trying to be led by the Holy Spirit. Do according to God's will, that's all. What are you doing here? I'm working hard here. I'm preaching the gospel for Jesus. So you're in charge of the hot chocolate and coffee? <laughs> yes, and I'm preaching the gospel also. So, and I'm having a great time serving the homeless people. In Jesus' name. You're going to cut some souls tonight? God willing. God willing. So let's uh, do our best. Peace! <laughs> There's a war for your mind going on right now. The devil set a trap for you before you were even born. There's a war for your mind right now. We understand there is a God. If you don't believe there's a God, think about it, please. Think about it. No God. That means that nothing created everything. Who created the nothing? There is a God. If there's a designer, there's a design. This flashlight's got a design. Someone made this. You can't take the parts and throw it a million times on the ground and it'll form a flashlight. Just because you add some zeros, it'll never have a design to it. If there's a design, if there's a designer. Your life has meaning. Your life has purpose. But you gotta find who God is. Look at this world around us. It's falling messed up, it's hurting. Rapes, killings. Fathers walking out of the, on their children. Husbands cheating on their wives. We're living in a fallen world, how come? The Bible says that we are spiritually fallen from God. We're in a place of enmity. Like a hostile separation. We don't know God, we don't see God. How come? It's because of sin. There is a God and He's holy. He's just. He's holy and He's just. Written in your heart is His law. You have a sense of right and wrong. You know when someone's done wrong to you. You know that you ought to do good to others. You know that you ought to love others and to bless others. It's written in your heart that you ought to do good. And the problem is the good that we want to do, we don't do. Rather, the bad that we 
don't want to do, we keep on doing. How come? Because we recognize it's not even us, it's sin living in us. If your heart desires to be sober, if your heart desires to be honorable, walk with integrity, be there for your, for your children, to be clean. All these things come from God. These attributes come from God. We're spiritually fallen from God. We need to get right with Him. What's holding us back is sin. If you have a humble heart, God can receive you. He's looking for a humble heart. A heart that desires to be clean, to be cleansed, to be washed clean. I'm not suggesting work harder and perform and try to, you know, try to work your way to God. God is so holy, so high above. We can't work our way to God. We need to, sac we need to accept His payment for our sins. God is holy and God's just. Please be reconciled to God. We're not here because we're trying to bring converts. We're not here because we're getting paid. We don't have any, any fleshly agenda. We're here because we were dead, but we found God. You know, if you walked out on the street right now and a truck came barreling by, I'm a truck driver. I can easily be loading 10,000, 20,000 pounds. If you walk on the street and a truck comes barreling down the road and hits you, you go flying off into the sidewalk. You're going to be radically affected, radically changed. How much bigger is God? As long as the, it's a religion, as long as it's just theology up in your head, it's meaningless. I'm saying seek God with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your heart, and you'll find Him. Seek God. Seek to be right with God, to be made right with God. Jesus says you must be born again, baptized with the Holy Spirit. You have an encounter with God, you get a taste on how much He loves you, how holy and pure and beautiful He is, and then He loves and cares about you. You get a taste of that, just a glimmer, and you'll never be the same again. You need the Holy Spirit. Seek God until He reveals Himself to you. Seek God until He washes you clean. He says, I'll put my Spirit within you. Take your heart of stone and give your heart of flesh, a healthy heart that knows God, that loves God. I'll, cause, I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my ways. If you're struggling with addictions, it's because you're walking without God. You need His power. You can't take on Satan by yourself. You can't take all the influences this world gives you by yourself. All the peer pressures. Ladies, this world telling you to sell yourself out. Don't sell yourself out. Your life is value. You're beautiful to God. You're valuable. You got a destiny. Get right with God and magnify the Lord. Save souls. It says that God's invisible attributes are clearly seen and understood. Deep down, you know that there's a God. Eternity is set in the hearts of men. See God. What's keeping you from Him? Tiny little addictions, tiny little, you know, you want to get a car, want to have a normal life. You want to hang out with your friends, fit in. What's keeping you from God? Minor things that don't give you any life. Minor things that bring shame in your life anyways. Your flesh is tempted to, to pursue sin. You do it. And then what happens? It eats you away. Because deep down, you know you want to live a lady pure and beautiful. You know you want to live honorable as a guy. Walk with integrity. Good to your word. There's a war for your mind. How do you know when you're being deceived? How do you know if you're brainwashed? How do you know if someone's tricking you or manipulating you? It's very difficult. One suggestion is seek out people who are not just telling you what you, you want to hear. People who are not just tickling your ears. Seek people who will challenge you and bring conviction. Conviction is a healthy thing. We're not here as Christians to condemn, to bring condemnation. I promise you though, if you die in your sins, you are condemned. But as long as you got breath in your lungs and a heart beating in your chest, there's still hope. God's, God believes in you and there's still hope. So choose life. Surrender to Jesus and choose life. Give Him the sins, give Him the addictions. Ask Him for help. Ask Him to take it away from you. Keep asking Him. Be sincere. He knows when he's being hustled. Be sincere. 
Don't just seek happiness or, or seek to get away from the consequences of your sin. Seek to be cleansed and freed from them. This is life. He'll give you a joy and a peace that's beyond comprehension. The devil's voice is so tricky. It's charming and it's manipulative. It feeds on your, your fleshly desires, your cheap desires. It tells you what you want to hear. But God, God's going to challenge you. God brings conviction. God's word, it cuts like a double-edged sword. It divides between soul and spirit, bone and marrow. It's a good thing. Respond to the conviction. Face the shame in your lives. Face the sin. It's okay. God understands. Just face it. Just have a repentant, a humble heart that wants to be clean, and God will take it. God will take it. He'll move your, you'll quicken your spirit. He'll give you power over addiction. The devil appears like a wolf in sheep's clothing. He appears like an angel of light. This world's tricking you. We live in a fallen world. You know the Bible says God is the, 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 uh, Satan is the God of this earth. God ultimately is sovereign and omnipotent. But Satan's ruling right now because we've given him authority. Don't give Satan any more authority in your life. When you choose to feed the flesh the desires, you're giving Satan authority to crush you, to screw with you, to mess with you, to hurt you. Choose God. God's holy. And you're not. But it's okay. Because God made a way to be right with him, to be reconciled through the blood of Jesus Christ. Be reconciled to God. Repent. Repent and trust in Jesus. Repent and trust in Jesus. My man, I wanted to kill myself. I wanted to kill myself. Behind that building, you can see the white, see the top of that white building? I snuck in in the middle of the night when it was being constructed. So I wanted to jump off and kill myself. I wanted a plan. That was the plan. That was your plan. But I turned to Jesus, man. Because Jesus' blood never fails me. His blood never fails me. Because I'm not accepted by him by my performance. I'm not good with God because of my works and my performance. I'm good with God because he loves me and I accept his free gift of forgiveness. Seek God's forgiveness, his mercy, his grace. All you got to do is say, I don't want to sin no more. God take it. That's it. A humble heart, a repentant heart that trusts in Jesus. I'm not lying. I'm trying to save your life. I'm trying to rescue you, man. You're intoxicated and you do not want to be intoxicated right now. I know you don't. I know you've done the programs to get clear. But they failed you. This world's failing you. The devil set a trap for you, man. He set a trap. He's trying to play you. The devil's trying to play you. God can make you an incredible man. That's who you're meant to be. It's your destiny. Get right with God and magnify Jesus. He can free you. I promise. I was addicted to porn. Chasing girls. Thought that maybe would satisfy me. I had a rage that I couldn't control. I'd shake. My knuckles would bleed when I hit the wall. Failed relationships. Moving from place to place. Couldn't hold down a job. I trust in Jesus. I'm married. I got a young... A young boy. I'm a father. I was convinced I was bipolar at one point. Convinced. I was taking 15 pills a day for bipolar. But Jesus, man. Jesus saves. I'm talking about a living God. A living, a real God. I'm not lying to you. He's holy and he's just. Don't get confused by all the lies. Don't get confused by all the other religions. The other religions say if you work and perform for this taskmaster God, then you'll be accepted that God owes you salvation. Well, what happens when you fall again? What about the sins you already broke? You've broken God's law. You broke God's law. So when you stand before him, what's going to happen? One day you'll give an account for your every choice, your every word, your every action. You'll give an account. And I don't want you to, to stand there and hang your head in shame 
and know that you're condemned and know that you deserve it because God offered you an opportunity. Choose life. Choose life. I guess what I want to say is uh, how God, by His grace, has, uh, has changed me. That uh, six, seven years ago, I would be you know, getting high and drunk and celebrating the way the, the world celebrates. And probably I would not remember, probably I would not remember anything by uh, midnight. But uh, today I'm here on the streets preaching the Word of God. And, it's amazing. It's amazing. You flip it the way you like it, and that's how you give it. Okay, all right. You like the food, guys? Yeah. yeah it's good? Uh, at the moment, I'm saving uh, 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 everyone, that, everyone that is coming to uh, over here you know, to get some food. Uh, that, uh, we give uh, them food and also uh, spiritual food. You know? Yeah. And I'm uh, serving them, uh, everyone that is coming over here. I'm so happy that, yeah. What are you taking? It's, uh, it's the best because uh, uh, we interact with people, we, uh, we talk to them and also we serve them uh, uh, food. Sauce. This one? Yes. Okay. Ah, this this one doesn't want to come out. Young man, how is the food? It's good. Yeah, you like it? There you go. Who is this rabbit bear? <laughs> oh, she's not here. I can see just ears. That's an awesome cat. Yeah. That's all the way to look, start 2013. Do I look as cute as you in it? Give it back. Okay. Okay. Who's God? Who's God to you? Who's God? Jesus loves you so much. He says, I'm the way. Jesus. Sir, Jesus loves you so much. It's Jesus Christ. So how are you feeling? You feeling older? Hell yeah, so man. Not yet. What was it? Was it midnight? Yes. Jesus yeah, is God. it is. <laughs> oh. Jesus is God. Hello. Jesus is God. 2013. Oh, sorry, God. There's no other place I'd rather Jesus, be right Jesus, now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I wish my parents were here. I love Jesus. Amen. Praise you Lord. do? Let's sing them a song. Let's sing a song. Amen. I love you, Lord. And I live. So where are you going to spend your eternity? So that's, that's, that's the main point, you know? You're looking like a million bucks, praise the Lord! Happy New Year! And then we, then we won't what die. are you doing here? 
I'm here to give the good news to everyone. The thousands of people Thousands of people here to tell them how much Jesus loves them. You're not afraid to stay here until one in the morning? No, no. I'm so excited to be here to receive the new year 2013. What are you doing now? Sharing the... Yes, and this is my brother in law who came from Ontario. He's visiting. We're sharing Jesus with our sister here. What an amazing time to spend together with your brother in law. Yes, and then with this new sister, new friend that we met. Woo! I joined a, I, I joined a NASCAR team. Oh, that's what's going on. So how, how is the meal? The meal is awesome. I love it when I come here. Like it too? Oh, there's chili? Yeah. I don't even know there's chili. There is mighty chili. Not just any chili, it's mighty chili. Steve is uh, smiling. Uh, sir, can you tell me why you're smiling? Because I was the uh, humble pastor preacher. <laughs> the humbleness of the pastor. He's, he's smiling because he's closest to the food. How's the mighty barbecue? What you got there? Pepperoni. Oh ho ho! Mighty pepperoni. You forgot to add. Mighty. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing, man? Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. It's good. Another year. What are you doing? Five. What's up, man? How am I doing? Yeah. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm just hanging out, you know? <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm camera shy. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Jesus. So it's 2012 or 13 years? 2013. It's Jesus Christ all the way. It's called Jesus. Jesus. The kingdom. The kingdom. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise the Lord. Happy New Year to everyone. It's the the year of Jubilee in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.
Sahar, you'll live forever, eternity in heaven. Praise the Lord. I want them to present this to Amazon. We decided to come out, feed the poor, spend time with them and welcome the 2013 together uh, with the homeless, with thousands of people that will be here at the Olympic Plaza. And uh, we're doing it not just with words, but we want to do it with deeds. We come with food. Uh, what we do gives credibility to what we preach. And that's what Jesus was all about. He came, he died, not just say, I will die. He actually died on the cross. He was nailed. He rose from the grave. and. Uh, because of it, we can have life as well. So imagine right now, if Jesus Christ would never die, if you would just in Gethsemane say, you know what, it's too much for me, I will not, I will not do it, I will not be nailed to a cross by some Gentiles, by, by some dust. And if he would never die, you and me, we would spend eternity in hell. But because he was a doer and he preached, that's what made the difference. Now we can spend eternity with Him because of His blood, because of the cross, because He was willing to die so we can all live. And I bless you with that. Go out of your comfort zone. Go out of your pews and preach the gospel to all creation. That's the only time you can do it when you take the step of faith and you actually go out. I encourage you to do that. Be blessed. Enjoy 2013. May 2013 be filled with many, many great victories in the name of Jesus Christ. Colin, uh, Colin says he knows Jesus, he's heard of Jesus, he believes in Jesus, and Jesus is, uh, has saved him many times, saved his life, but uh, there's a struggle still happening. So there's a struggle still happening. And I said to him that, you know, Jesus isn't just big enough to save a soul from hell, he's big enough to, 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 to clean a person and save them from sin as well. You know, deep down, deep down, Colin wants to be an honorable man. He wants to honor the Lord. He wants to love God. He wants to be a good husband, you know. But the problem is this, this, this world, Satan does arrest. This world is deceptive. And so I just suggest, like, Colin, like, like, don't trust a pastor. Don't trust a church. You know, seek all these good things, but know God's word for yourself and, and know the author. Have a humble heart, which, which I see you have tonight. Have a humble heart that desires God. Clean me, clean me, Lord. I don't want the filth. I don't want any depression. Clean me. I don't want to get, you know, drunk or high. I want, I want to know you, God. You know, the only way you're going to be satisfied is is from the one who created you. Who you really are is hidden in God. So get to know, like, read His Word, know it, man, and, 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 and love God, love God. I love you, brother. Amen. So it's really Amen. So it's, I love you. All right. I'm glad I met you. Yes. I'm glad. I'm glad he's my co -worker. So it's a it's a repentant heart. You know, just not once be like, oh God, forgive me. You know, no, a repentant heart daily. You're walking in a in a in a, in a repentant heart. If you stumble and fall, it's okay, man. Jesus died for that. Just continue to be repentant and trust in Jesus. Okay, my, my, and he will give you power in your God. life. See, Jesus says you must be born again, baptized with the Holy Spirit. That somehow his spirit comes within you. You know, if you got hit by that train earlier, Colin would just sit hi to me, you know, and he he was saying bye and he was running off, he's walking backwards, and the train was the train was coming and the security guard who wasn't there earlier stopped him and he's walking backwards and the train went like incredibly close so, so he, he could have died just like that so um anyways so this is this is, this is serious man this is this is an urgent message and uh so how, how do you be repentant i mean that's between you and god that's why i came to you yeah. yes that's between you and god man but when he knows you're sincere and sees you say god man I don't want to live for myself. I don't want to live for this world. I don't want to live for sin. God, take my life. I'll live for you. When He knows you're sincere, repentant, and trust in Him, He says that He'll come within you. He'll change your heart. He'll put His Spirit within you. It's called being born again, overwhelm you, baptized with the Holy Spirit, and encounter with God. If you got hit by that train, you'd be radically changed, right? How much bigger is God than a train, man? Right? So yeah, an encounter with God, when you get a taste of how much He loves you, how holy and beautiful He is, and how much He loves you, you're radically changed, man. This world will never satisfy you, and you, you'll recognize that more than ever. Only God can satisfy you. There's such a great hope that He has for you in heaven. He's got a, he's got a, a mission for you on earth. Get it right with Him. Be reconciled through Jesus by surrendering to Him. You surrendering your life smile, to Him. Right? <laughs> Get right with Jesus you by surrendering. All right. By I love it. Amen. When, when you almost got hit, when? 
just now, just oh, tonight. Less than it an was hour, very less than close. Half an hour ago. Less yeah. than half an hour ago. Yeah. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. It's only six. We're only been doing this for six hours today. So uh, you may be wondering what's up with all the signs and uh, and this stuff. So um, I, I want to show you something. For the past. 10 years we are feeding the homeless on the streets of Calgary. We preach the gospel uh, for the past seven years as an organization called Street Church. And uh, of course the city of Calgary for all those years is harassing, attacking us, bringing unconstitutional laws. So what we decided to do is bring all of this into the public eye. And uh, today we're going to have thousands of people. They will be able to see what's going on uh, as they walk by and, and you know they're curious. What's going on? What is about our rights? And um, here we are to let you know that City Hall is, is taking our rights away. They do pass unconstitutional bylaws. So what you have seen today, according to the mayor and all aldermen, it's illegal. They say it's illegal to preach the gospel. It's illegal to distribute tracts. It's illegal to give Bibles away. It's illegal to congregate, believe it or not. It says that gathering like this, where few people come together in a public place, space is actually illegal, believe it or not. They passed a, a new law again targeting street church uh, that we can face thousands of dollars of fines and jail time possibly. You know, imagine you have a child that dies on the streets out of starvation and now me as a pastor, as a Christian, I go over there and I hand him a, a bread. I just committed an offense. Giving free goods is prohibited on the streets of Calgary. If you're dying of cancer or AIDS or any other disease and I lay hands on you and I pray or even if I just stand like this and just pray I just committed an offense I I give you I offered you my services as a pastor that's illegal as well if I bring a table with bread on it or clothes I just committed an offense because placing material on the ground it's prohibited they say we have write-ups. Even those write-ups, they say, are illegal. We are not able to communicate with the public anymore. They say that's illegal. All signs are illegal like this. They have to be pre-approved by the city councillors. So be aware, stand up for your rights, because if you don't stand up for them today, you will not have them tomorrow. We have a saying, use it or lose it. We got to exercise our rights, stand stand by our rights and if someone anyone tries to take those rights away we as a nation as citizens of this country we got to stand up and say no you are working for us not the other way around politicians are not the kings in their private castles they are servants of the people we pay their salaries but they act like kings in their own private castles. so stand up streetchurch.ca come and help Help us uh, with anything you can, even as a volunteer. Just come and uh, stand for your rights with us. Be blessed today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And remember, God Almighty loves you. And this nation was built upon the Word of God. The missionaries, the Christian people came to this country to build a nation that will uphold our rights and the rights of everyone. Not just Muslims, not just homosexuals, everyone equal under the law. Stand up for your rights. Be blessed.